Hello, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate how I made this shirt today. Um, the last time I made this shirt, I uploaded it on my on the Facebook group. I didn't end, I've gotten the name now, and quite a lot of people were showing interest in the pattern. So I decided to make a video on how to do it. So I decided to make this one slightly different because um, some people probably don't have a crochet skill. So I decided to make something you don't need to crochet on. This is started and finish off of the machine. You do everything on the machine and just sew the pieces together. So what you want to do is for this one, I folded brim for both the edge here and the waist and for this one i only had to um crochet the waist and the edge so um also for this one i crocheted um the two panels together by joining with the contrast yarn and for this for this one what i had to do was um just sew the inside together like so and um i didn't use any crochet skill and it's kind of neat i like it and um and i think it's easier that way if you struggle to um finish up your um your knitted pieces <laughs> it's easier when you know you finish off from the machine the only thing you just need to do is sew it together so without wasting so much time, I'm going to go straight into the video and tell us how I made this lovely sh um, shot. It will be much better because we're going to be following like measurements, measurements for this one. So it will be much better if you've been able to calculate to measure your yarn. Know how many rows or how many pins gives you what centimeters or what inches so that you can um, know how much to cast on and how many rows to build. So I used a total of 11 um, inches for the length of the trouser. And I'm going to tell you how many rows I used. This is like a worsted weight yarn. So this is, if you stretch it, is up to 11 inches really so and the waist was about um nine inches if you stretch it it will be about nine inches yeah it was about nine inches so um and that's basically the measurements you need so you just need to know how many rows across gives you nine inches and how many how many pins you need to cast on to give you nine inches and how many rows you need to make to get 11 inches and i'm going to go into the video so what you need for this shot is just your yarn some um waist yarn sewing needles and your loom pick just in case you have drop stitches so what you do is you cast on as normal so i casted on 21 pins to give me 20 to give me seven inches that i needed to start off my work and after casting on the waist yarn just a regular cast on on one to the front of the needle one to the back of the needle and then i so um even though my tension guard is broken i still used it that way because i don't like knitting without the tension uh, so i Put the waist yarn in the middle tension because it's slightly thinner than the main yarn I'm going to be working with. After doing that, I casted, um, I made about five rows of waist yarn and I was tugging a little bit when I get to the um, corner. So at the end of the five row waist yarn, I removed my waist yarn and dropped whatever was remaining at the center and I added my working yarn. This time around, I changed my tension from um, the small hole to the big um, to the biggest one on the tension. So just make sure you go slowly on your first row and ensure all the needles catches um, all the needles catches the yarn and you don't have any drop stitches. Then I knitted a total of ten rows. And when I got to the 10th row, I made um, the brim. 
which I'm going to show you. I had a bit of issue identifying the first stitch here, but with patience and focus, I was able to do it eventually. So just pick the first stitch you identify and then put that back onto the needle and then knit on it. So pick each um, stitches, each of the first stitches. It will be it is much easier for you to identify it with a high contrast waist yarn. So you always see the first stitch. Pick it and then fold it back onto your pin and then knit over it. Um, I think there are a lot of videos on YouTube that explain this better if you want a better um, explanation. But I did explain it better as well when it got to the um to the waist because I, I need to I needed to fold the brim at the waist as well. So this is what you have to do up, up, up until the end of the tenth row. I'm going to show you more slowly so you can um, understand if that's possible. So at the end of this row 10, carefully pick all your stitches you have folded your brim. And this is what happens. Your work is now half the actual size. So I'm resetting back to row 5 if you're using a counter. So you go back to row 5 now and then you need another 5 rows. At the end of your 5th row from your brim, which is now your row 10, you increase 1 stitch from each side. So you just have to knit on one extra needle on both sides of your work. And that would have taken you to row 11 of the nail counting. So what you need to do is increase every 10 rows from your um, up until row 30. So that means you're going to increase one needle on each side on row 20 one needle on each side on row 30 as well so that's how we're going to um do this up until row 30. so i'll show you again how to um do the increase on each side when i get to row 30. so this is my 30th row just need one extra needle on the side and go down on that row and then that's, I'm just trying to fix some drop stitches there. Knit gently, make sure everything is catching. It's better to repair your drop stitches as you go. And then add another extra needle at the end of the row, as so. And that is it. So after the 30th row, I knitted another 20 rows to bring me to row 50. So at the end of row 50, I added um waist yarn, same black. So the only thing, I just put it through the yarn guide. I didn't put it through the tension guide. And I just knitted, making sure the needle is catching the two yarns at the same time. So this is just to make sure I mark my 58 stitches, um, stitch, the 58th row, because I'm going to need it at the end of my knitting to, um, to fold over the, um, the waist of the, of the trouser. So just knit, make sure you knit with a contrast yarn just to mark that row, the 58th row. After the end of the row, drop off your waist yarn and then um, knit another so knit another 10 rows. That will bring us to 60 rows. I actually needed 55 rows to make my 11 inches for the length of this trouser with the calculation of my yarn. But because I'm going to fold over the waist, which is going to bring me to the half of the length of the brim, 
so i needed 10 rows to take me to 60 rows so by the time i make um the brim it's going to take me back to 55 rows so at the end of the 60th row i'm going to see you and show you how to fold the brim with the contrast yarn So this is the end of the 60th row and I'm going to start folding my contrast yarn and this is a bit more visible. So what you want to do is for the um for your contrast yarn there will be a frown and there will be a smile. The frown is the cuff that is always facing down and the smile is the cuff that is facing up which is usually away from you. So what you want to do is it is the frown you want to pick you always want to pick the one further away from you so when you pick the contrast yarn um when you pick the yarn just pick the your main knitting yarn don't pick the contrast yarn like i initially did i eventually had to remove the contrast yarn don't pick the contrast yarn from the row just pick the um, main working yarn you're working with and then just do the brim folding technique so it might be difficult for you to identify but one major technique to use here is when you pick the next stitch it usually pulls on the previous stitch so that's one big way to know if you are pulling on the right stitch when you pull the next stitch it usually pulls on the um on the next on the previous stitch which you have hung on the needle so that's just me getting rid of the waist yarn that i picked initially get rid of the waist yarn don't pick it don't knit it together with your with your brim so I'm going to just let this go as slowly as possible so that you can catch it and um, that's about how much explanation I can give at this point. So at this point, I was very, very confused about where my next stitch, is, stitch was. And I think I pulled too much with the previous one. So it kind of um, it has gone into um, hiding. So I had to remove the previous stitch in hope that that's going to um, relieve a bit of tension from there. And I'll be able to identify my new stitch to be picked. So you have to go as slowly as possible, as carefully as possible, so that you don't ruin um, the work. So another thing I eventually started doing was placing my finger on the, pre on the next stitch, just so I know when next to pull before I pull the first one, because once you pull on one, it pulls on the next one, and it kind of um, makes the stitch on that spot really tiny and difficult to see. So you just want to make sure your um, yarn is sitting well, and you, as you cranking, you're knitting across as well. So you just have to be as careful as possible, as slow as possible. This was the part of the work that took most of the time, but it was worth it. It was really worth it by the time the work came off of the machine. 
it looks genuine like an original knitted piece if you know what i mean So this is almost the end of the row. After the end of the row, you just need to be as careful as possible, as gentle as possible. After the end of the row, you could do with knitting one more row, which I did, but I eventually took out when I was joining it. Uh, but I think the best thing to do is cast off immediately with waist yarn. So Either you need one more row across, make it as gentle as possible, ensuring all the pieces of the needles are um, catching on. And then cast off with your um, waist yarn. Use a high contrast yarn because you're going to really need um, these stitches. So the most gratifying part of, um, of this work was seeing each piece falling off of the machine. I don't know about you, but I love looking at my pieces full of the machine. So knit about five more rows of waist yarn or until the end of your waist yarn, whatever your choice is, and then cast off the machine. Just look at that, look at the side. So cast off and what you have after taking your work off of the machine will look something like this. Fold that at the ankle, fold that at the waist. For the ankle bit, just take your waist yarn out as, as normal as you would if you um, cast it on a scarf and everything is all right. You don't need to um, do any crocheting or any joining or anything and that would be perfect. And then for the waist, which is the widest part, I did a slip stitch for um each of the um i did a slip stitch for each of the finer um finer stitches so just make one chain attach your hand make one chain pick the next stitch i told you i got rid of the extra row i made pick the next stitch and slip out through the two um, stitches slip out through the two stitches and that's what you're going to do up until um, the end of the row this is a really simple crochet technique and this is about all the crocheting you're going to need um, for this work so just um just to finish up to make up, um to make sure your stitches doesn't drop. I'm doing this crocheting technique because my background is actually crocheting. But if your background is knitting and you know your way around the two needles thin, then you can always use that to finish up without having to use the um crochet. Just something to make sure your your um yarns are not going to fall off. So finish up like so. Make two chains, cut up your yarn, pull gently, and that is finished. So what you need to do is you need to make two panels, two of this. Just replicate this um, that I've shown you 
up on um from the beginning of the video up until now you need to make two because this is just one portion of the of the trouser so after taking a waist yarn this is what your work looks like folded at the prim everything looking neat and nice and then what you just need to do is fold it into two and that's your work coming together you just need another piece and then i'll show you how to join this so now this is my two pieces all done and then the other one has been made was made first and it has stretched out so i'm just leaving this one to cool off a bit as well so i'm going to start with joining off the other one what you want to do is remember your 30th row which was the last row you increased on before making on another 35 rows uh, another 25 rows so you mark your 30th row with a stitch marker like so so if you don't know one of the um signs to identify your 30th row is that it was the last row you made an increase on so the place where your work started being of the same length that's where you're going to um, stitch mark and then you're just going to sew from the feet i don't know why i keep calling it the feet from the brim of the trouser up onto the marked um, stitch there's no special technique of sewing i'm going to show you how i did my sewing as well so just sew whatever you can use a mattress stitch if you want if that's convenient for you also if you're making this for a baby boy or you don't like what the um the folded brim is looking like you can add a bit of um elastic band to um to the brim just so it shrinks a little bit and then it's more fitted on the on the brim so what you're saying is just how i seal this because i don't know if some people would be interested in knowing how i seal a piece together so i just um so went through and i tried to be as close to to the last stitch as possible i'm trying not to take too much um, stitches so that i don't really jeopardize the size of my work so that's it i have joined the two i have seen the two up until my row 30 which is my point of the stitch marker now what you need to do is place the two side by side and determine which side is your front and which side is going to be the back so for this one i'm going to sew the back first with the um remain so for this one i'm going to sew the back first with the um with one of the yarn the extra yarn just put that through the darning needle and just sew as you were sewing for the two um as you sew earlier for the panels you can use a mattress stitch if you want but it's the really very simple sewing technique but when you get to the band you don't want to sew the band like we sew the fit um like we sew the um brim so you want to sew the band panel by panel just like i'm showing you so that you have a pocket where you can um where we can eventually pass through a chain so you have to sew it panel by panel for the um, for the back of the trouser and it's really easy just take a look at what i'm doing or whatever technique you'd like to use just to make sure there is still a pocket in there and you're not completely um sewing off the pocket so after sewing the back this is what it looks like at this juncture i really think what you can do with this front is very versatile you can have the zip if you want you can have the button you can crochet on it you can just do as much as you want to do on it but what i simply did was sew it from the um 
from our 38th needle up onto the waist. So for the front, I didn't sew the waist at all. I had to leave it open. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like after sewing it. So this is what I looked like after sewing it. And what I just did here was um, tie up the loose ends of my yarn. And then I just fixed them, I tucked them in into the waist. And I cut them off, of course, with the turning needle. At this juncture, if you have some glue, you can use some glue on the knots just to make sure they don't come undone. And that's that about that. So cut off excess yarn like so. And that is your trouser done. So the next thing I did was I crocheted about 100 chains. And um, if you don't have crochet skill again, you can just knit about two rows on the knitting machine and then had, um, and then leave a long loop, then put the loop through a darning needle and then pass it through the waist of the yarn, which is the reason why you had to um, sew each panel at the back. So pass it through the waist of the yarn until you come out on the other side and this is what you're going to have. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please comment, subscribe. And I hope to upload more um, crafty videos in future.